about this time. Yeah, it's time to put a bow on my Remember the Calgary series. Now, which bow do we call it to put an end to this series? That remains to be seen. But this is episode 26 in my Remember the Calgary series. Just do a final recap and I'll look back on each episode that I made. Look back on each team or one event in one case and just give my feelings of what I took out of it as I was making that video and that episode. It's been just over a year since I announced that I was going to do this Remember the Calgary series, so I'm definitely proud that I see it all the way to the end from when I did my introduction video till now when I give my final recap. Before I dig right in, what I usually like to do is uh, on my YouTube channel, I mostly talk Calgary Sports as a Calgary Sports fan, so if you want to follow along with this Calgary Sports fan's journey, just uh, make sure you hit like and subscribe. However, I always want to acknowledge what inspired me to do this. Remember the Calgary series? I first started off back in the 2018-19 season in the WHL, where the Calgary Hitmen did their Corral series, where they were temporarily the Calgary Centennials, the Calgary Cowboys, and the Calgary Rangers, which I also talked about those teams in this series. And I have all the, it's all in the playlist, but I also have all the other episodes in my description below. So that was the first inspiration, and now, sadly, the Stampede Corral is no longer around. But a local clothing company, Sea of Dead Clothing, which is where I got this cap from. And so far, it's been the only purchase I made from Sea of Dead Clothing, but I do plan to make some more purchases in the future, as they specialize in sports teams from the past that I talked about in this series. But I've also seen their branch out when it comes to landmarks or even radio stations from the past, AM 106, anyone, definitely still most nostalgic for that. And then that Chris Wilson story that I talked about on CBC, which he showed off his Calgary jersey collection. So I have all that in the description below as well. So that's what inspired me to uh, do the series as someone who mostly talks Calgary sports with the current teams that we have right now. I figure it was a fun series to look back on and see what I can gather and uh, what I can reflect on some of these teams and I think I went a little let's say a little beyond that I was originally planned because I know I looked on sites including the hockey database that there was like I might as well talk about every hockey team that uh, is on there that represented Calgary just to make sure everybody was covered so that's what this Remember the Calgary series is all about and it was Actually, I think if I look on the playlist, is I'll just look on the playlist and take back on all the videos and episodes I took a look at. I think I uploaded the introduction video on May 17th, 2020. So yeah, we're just over a year when I started the introduction. And, you know, I was anticipating it was going to take a year or two to uh, do this series if I was able to get an episode out every couple weeks. Which actually worked out to be that, because this is episode 26, the final recap, and I'm just glad that I see it to the end, and I've actually did it. So let's look back on episode 1. Remember the Calgary Rads? That was the first team I talked about in this series. Remember the Calgary Rads roller hockey international team, the inline hockey that Calgary had, and it was swept in that craze in the mid-1990s, and don't forget the apostrophe between the D and Z. It definitely has a 1990s theme, and that's what I started off that uh, series with. I mean, I put it in random order for most of these teams, but there was a couple I purposely put towards the end. This cap definitely is a clue on uh, one team that I purposely put towards the end, but uh, this team was in 1993-94, the Calgary Rads. I mean, definitely was the theme or it was a craze that I remember roller hockey that it was really only exclusive in California that seemed to spread out and just all the names and there was definitely some interesting uh, NHL players that played in that league and also going back to see a dead clothing they also brought up just before I made that episode 
uh, Paul Klatney, who actually played for the Calgary Stampeders that was on the 1992 team. He also played for the Rats as well, so uh, it was definitely an interesting look back on that. I do remember they existed, but I never went to any games. I just figured it was just a craze or a fad. Kind of like Pogs back in the mid 1990s. So that was the one I talked about the Calgary Rats. And I uploaded that video on May 24th, 2020. So a week after I said I was going to do this video series and outline the episodes that I plan to talk about, that's when I dove right into that series. So episode number two. Remember the Calgary Outlaws? And now you're going to have to say which Outlaws team, because I actually talked about two Outlaws teams in this episode. In episode two, I talked about first the baseball team. Remember the Canadian Baseball League that only made it to the All-Star Game? That was the Calgary Outlaws in that league. It was trying to replace the Calgary Cannons. That much later in the series, I definitely talked about them. But the Canadian Baseball League definitely was very short-lived, as it only made it till the All-Star Game. And the fact that it was named after the championship was the Ferguson Cup, named after Ferguson Jenkins, the Canadian pitcher in the Baseball Hall of Fame. They didn't make it to that. It ended at the All-Star Game right here in Calgary, and Calgary by default actually got the... I guess you could say the championship was the best record in the Canadian Baseball League. So I talked about that first, and then the second half of that video, I talked about the basketball team. There was the National Basketball League, if I remember. There was a Calgary Outlaws team that played in the Jack Simpson gym at the University of Calgary. And similarly, they had the same fate as the baseball team. They had a great regular season, but it could not finish the season because the league folded. So there's a cautionary tale that I'll take out of Episode 2 is if, I mean, it was, it just ties in with the Western culture that Calgary is known for, that if we want to bring in a baseball team, and I'm going to, or a basketball team, or any other sports team that's trying to replace a prominent team, let's say, for example, the Calgary Outlaws came after the Calgary Cannons, and the baseball team that came in after the, or basketball team, and say that came in after the Calgary 88s, and if you name the team the Outlaws, there's some cautionary tale right there. So let's hope, God forbid, we never lose the Calgary Flames. That if we have another hockey team and we call it the Calgary Outlaws, they'll have a great team but not get to the Stanley Cup playoffs because the league folded or team folded. That's just uh, hypothetical, but uh, that's what I took out of the Calgary Outlaws episode. And it was interesting trying to find some, uh, some of these episodes, especially with teams going back. It was a challenge to find uh, any information, any stats. I was able to get some for the baseball team, but not so for the basketball team. I was just happy to find a logo. It looked like you'll send me sand pointing guns. Throw the uh, cowboy hat or basketballs instead of bullets. And not the same you'll send me sand that you see on Looney Tunes or my old high school with Cowboy Sam with the Crescent Cowboys. Go Cowboys! So that was episode two, and I uploaded that video on June 7th, 2020. Now let's segue in. That I said go Cowboys. Well, episode 3, that's exactly what I talked about. I talked about the Calgary Cowboys. Remember the Calgary Cowboys? Me, personally, I didn't because they predated me, but uh, was aware of the history as the Calgary Cowboys were in the defunct World Hockey Association at that time, that Calgary Cowboys played in the old Stampede Corral from 1975 to 1977. As that team definitely traveled a lot because it started off as the Miami Screaming Eagles and never played a game. And then it moved to Philadelphia to be the Philadelphia Blazers. And then it moved to Vancouver to be the Vancouver Blazers at the same time when the Vancouver Canucks of the National Hockey League were in. And then the Calgary Cowboys after the team moved to Vancouver, from Vancouver to Calgary, to be the Calgary Cowboys and played here for two seasons. And then the team folded after it was lack of interest. And ironically, the Stampede Corral was considered too small to house a professional hockey team. But then a few seasons later, we got the Flames from Atlanta. And they temporarily made the Corral the home. So kind of ironic how that worked out. But the World Hockey Association was not on stable footing. 
if you look back on the history of the World Hockey Association. So I talked about that in Episode 3, the Calgary Cowboys. And it actually was not the first team that represented Calgary in the World Hockey Association because there was a team called the Calgary Broncos that was supposed to be in when the World Hockey Association began in 1972. But the owner of that team passed away, so that team actually went to become the Cleveland Crusaders, and then eventually was the second version of the Minnesota Fighting Saints before it folded, just like everything else. I do sometimes hypothetically say, if we had a bigger arena, could the Calgary Cowboys held on long enough when the World Hockey Association merged with the National Hockey League? Could we be saying our hockey team be the Calgary Cowboys? Because, as you know, there are four, four teams from the World Hockey Association that got merged in with the National Hockey League, and actually only one of those four teams still exist in the original city, was the Edmonton Oilers. Actually, they did start off as the Alberta Oilers, and actually that team was also proposed that it was going to be shared between Calgary and Edmonton. But that didn't go through, so that eventually became the Edmonton Oilers. And then the Hartford Weathers, who are also who are known as the New England Weathers, well, as you know, if you follow along in the National Hockey League, the Air Force Warriors are now the current Carolina Hurricanes. And then you got the Quebec Nordiques, who are now currently the Colorado Avalanche. And the Calgary Cowboys and the Quebec Nordiques had a very interesting matchup in the 1976 WHL or WHA playoffs, as I meant to say, in the first round that I touch upon. And then the Winnipeg Jets, which the original Winnipeg Jets came into National Hockey are now the current Arizona Coyotes. So those are the three of the four teams that came from the World Hockey Association wound up relocating after they went into National Hockey League. So that's what I talked about in Episode 3, the Calgary Cowboys, and I uploaded that video on July 2nd, 2020. So Episode number 4, I talked about the Calgary 88s. Remember the Calgary 88s? And this team was in the World Basketball League, if I have my acronyms right, as this league, I'm going to say, or this team, the Calgary 88s, they played out of the, then the Olympic Saladome. It was originally called the Olympic Saladome when they first uh, opened up the building, and the name obviously derives from the inspiration of the 1988 Winter Olympics. So in this episode, I feel, feel that this team, the Calgary 88s, I'm going to say is the team that was closest that Calgary ever got to an NBA team or an NBA quality team. And also I remember from that episode when I looked upon the best player that came out of the Calgary 88s is Chip England, who actually did play in the National Basketball Association. There's many players that eventually either played or coached in the, the NBA. And I think if I recall Chip England the last time, that I looked upon his career, he was actually on the coaching staff for the San Antonio Spurs. And then the other interesting thing with this league is they actually had a height limit where you can be too tall. So players like Yao Ming or Shaquille O'Neal, they wouldn't be able to play in this league because they are too tall. And I think it was six foot, six foot five. I think was the maximum height, if I recall. So even I might have had a chance to play in this league, but uh, ultimately. The team folded, as well the whole league folded. And I'm going to say that once the Calgary lost the 88s, we couldn't really recreate that. See, the Calgary Outlaws and a couple more basketball teams that I'll touch upon when I recap some episodes. But that was episode four. And I also did upload that video on July 2nd, 2020. So now on the next episode, episode number five. Remember the Calgary Tigers? Uh, that's a very, very... You know, pressing question to uh, talk about or ask that because I think most people watching this don't remember the Calgary Tigers. So we're going back well over 100 years. As I talked about the Calgary Tigers, mostly the hockey team, the first professional hockey team that represented Calgary. You had the Calgary Tigers, then the Calgary Cowboys of the World Hockey Association, and then currently the Calgary Flames. And just like the Calgary Flames, the Calgary Tigers actually did play for the Stanley Cup. And they actually played for the Stanley Cup against the Montreal Canadiens. There were different leagues back at that time, and the Calgary Tigers won their respective league and had the right to take on the 
Montreal Canadiens for the Stanley Cup back in 1924. And fortunately, the Calgary Tigers did not win the Stanley Cup. It was the Montreal Canadiens who actually won their first Stanley Cup, if I understand, against the Calgary Tigers. And then after that, in 1986, the Calgary Flames played the Montreal Canadiens and lost to them in 1986. But then we got revenge in 1989. So there definitely is some Calgary Montreal hockey history dating back all the way to the Calgary Tigers and that's what inspired the jerseys that the Calgary Flames wore at the 2011 Heritage Classic that was held at McMahon Stadium. goes back to the Calgary Tigers and then there was a few players I touched upon there actually are in the Hockey Hall of Fame but as I was researching in this episode there used to be a rugby team that also was called the Calgary Tigers and you can kind of say in some roundabout way, the Calgary Tigers hockey team and the rugby team got kind of traces back to the Flames and the Stampeders. So that's what I talked about in episode 5. I'm going to say, I always have to ask the question in the spirit of my Remember the Calgary series, but I don't think anyone would say, yes, I remember the Calgary Tigers. I like to ask, how old are you and how did you manage to live that long to still be around today to answer the question with yes, and watch the video. But that was episode 5. I went way, way back as I talked about the Calgary Tigers. And then that episode I uploaded on August 3rd, 2020. So that's uh, when I made that video. So episode 6, do you remember the Calgary Drillers and Crush? Well, that's what I talked about in this episode, in episode number 6. There was talking about two basketball teams that briefly were around. There was the National Basketball League, I think, if I remember. It was, yeah, it was a continuation from the Calgary 88s. But I think this is the last dash that Calgary's had for a basketball team in the city because I don't feel like the culture and the market is right there if Calgary were to ever get an NBA team, at least in my lifetime. I know that Toronto, obviously, is the... Guinea Canada's team in the NBA and then didn't work so well in Vancouver, but Vancouver never had a good team. And one of the what ifs is what if, if well, I meant to say, what if Steve Francis didn't look so disappointed if he, when he got drafted by the Grizzlies in 1999? That's one ifs, but it's another more basketball team. I mean, the Calgary Drillers didn't last a season, and then the Calgary Crush actually lasted a few seasons. Played at my old gymnasium. At the old campus at Sait, and there was definitely some of you who were a fan of my college team, the Sait Trojans. You would know some personnel that was involved with the Calgary Crush, including Eddie Richardson III, that was the coach, and I remember Jimmy Cloud and Brendan Stewart, who also played for the Sait Trojans, that also played for the Calgary Crush. And just like era, like these basketball teams in the past, eventually, you know, they ceased operations as there wasn't as much interest. But those are the last two basketball teams that I talked about in the Memory of Characters. This is a fairly quick episode because uh, there wasn't much information, not much history, but I talked about the Drillers and Crush. And interestingly, when I'm going talking about the Calgary Drillers, they also did play at the old Stampede Corral. So it's a very interesting. That's why it, was, it meant a lot to me when I did talk about making videos showing the demolition and progress of the Stampede Corral that even though much of the history predates me, I still feel the impact, just what I remember and just how it blew my mind that the Flames used to play there, but then all these other teams that I talked about in my Remember the Calgary series that also played in there and just how much it meant in terms of pop culture history. So uh, you can see those videos, but uh, that was episode six. I uploaded that August 3rd, 2020, and I do remember both these teams because they were in the early part of the 2010s and the late 2000s, whatever you want to call that decade that started after 2000, but I never went to any of these basketball games. I think I do remember actually going to some Calgary 88 schemes back in the day, but uh, I mean, I casually follow the NBA, and I, mean, I guess you can say Toronto is my team now. I did a little bit of the Chicago Bulls when they had Michael Jordan, but uh, I don't think uh, Calgary will ever have a basketball team Again, just given the past and our market and the appetite's not there for Calgary to ever get an NBA team. I mean, can you imagine uh, LeBron James, if we can land LeBron James in his prime? He's like, nah, I'm not going to go to Los Angeles. I'm not going to go to Miami. I'm coming to Calgary because they got the Stampede or any other uh, NBA star. Just, it just 
It doesn't seem to jive right now. So that was episode number six. Episode number seven. Remember the Calgary Cardinals and Expos? I talked about some more baseball in this series. And yes, the Calgary Cardinals and the Calgary Expos, I put them both together. Both of those teams were played at Foothill Stadium. And they were backed by former Cannons owner in Russ Parker. And yes, last thing is I would say, the Calgary Cardinals were affiliated with the St. Louis Cardinals. And the Calgary Expos were affiliated with the then Montreal Expos, who are now the Washington Nationals, but these teams played in the Pioneer League. And that's what I looked back on in that episode. Very interesting baseball history. And I'm going to say the biggest name that played for both these teams that I remember is the Big Cat in terms of Andres Galarraga, who played, who's based out of Venezuela. He actually did play his early baseball days before he made it to the show with the Montreal Expos, but I also remember Andres Galarraga, he had his bigger days as a Colorado Rocky and Atlanta Brave. But uh, the Montreal Expos, if you look back on their franchise, they have one heck of an alumni, but the Cardinals and Expos were before when those players played in the organization. As Ross Parker, he had bigger visions to have a AAA baseball team that, you know, I potentially tap on that. As I'll talk about that, but that was episode 7. These teams also mostly predated me. I was in my infancy for the Calgary Expos before we got this team that uh, I'll touch upon later. So that episode, I uploaded that on August 16th, 2020. So that was episode number 7. So number 8, remember the Calgary Centennials? So kind of going back to the Corral series, the Calgary Centennials, they came into the league. They first was the Calgary Buffaloes in 19, 9, 1966, and looking at their record, they uh, they had a very, very bad record. Don't blame, don't blame them for changing the name, but the Calgary Centennials, and yes, it was named after the Canada Centennial in 1967. We definitely know that date well, that year well, especially as a hockey fan for another team in particular. But the Calgary Centennials was the first major junior hockey team to represent Calgary. That was in the Western Canadian Hockey League, which is now rebranded as the Western Hockey League because we have some American teams that play in it. But the Calgary Centennials were kind of the first rendition of the Calgary Hitmen now, and that was going back to the Corral series. With the Calgary Centennials for Episode 8, and I would say the big thing that we'll take out of the Calgary Centennials is some of the hockey alumni. The biggest names that played for that team, we had uh, Danny Ayer, Mike Rogers, and Jerry Holland. That was the uh, big line that played for the Calgary Centennials when I looked at that history. And then when the Calgary Hitmen wore those jerseys, it looked very similar to what the Chicago Blackhawks wear. But this team played from 1966 as the Buffaloes, and then they came to Centennials. 1967 for Canada's 100 centennial and then they played in Calgary until 1977 and then you can follow along with the journey that the team played in Billings, Montana. This team still exists today in the Western Hockey League as the Tri-City Americans based out of Kennewick, Washington. So that's the gist of talking about the Calgary Centennials and and some of those former Centennials were a part of the opening ceremonies during the Calgary Hitman Corral Series, I uploaded this video back on September 5th, 2020. So episode number 9, well considering that I just talked about the Centennials, figured I might as well talk about the Calgary Wranglers, a team that followed the Calgary Centennials in the Western Canada Hockey League. For episode 9, as when the Calgary Centennials moved to Billings, Montana, Calgary got the Wranglers as that team started in Winnipeg as the Jets and the Monarchs. And then we got the Calgary Wranglers in 1977. And then we had them until 1987. Don't remember the Wranglers as much. As I was around towards the end of their time with the Calgary Wranglers, as I was in my infancy, but it was the last team that uh, represented the Calgary Hitmen in the Calgary Hitmen Corral Series. And that was the last game that I was at, last event that I was at, at the Stampede Corral before I got knocked down. For episode 9, and you can say there was a lot of former Calgary Flames that uh, 
played for the Calgary Wranglers, including goaltender Mike Vernon. You might know that name. And also, I remember Kelly Kissio, who also was a big part of the Calgary Hitmen. And he did play some time with the Calgary Flames as well towards the end of his career. Those are the immediate names that come to mind. And the Calgary Wranglers were in the league final in 1984, but then lost to the... Uh, Victoria Royals, I believe, and I think the Calgary Centennials also was in the league final, but did not win the championship. At least the Calgary Hitman was able to capture the WHL championship twice in 1999 and 2010 under Kelly Kissio's management, may I add. But that was episode 9, and the Calgary Wranglers still exist today in the Western Hockey League, as after 1987, the Calgary Wranglers relocated to Lethbridge, who are now the Lethbridge Hurricanes, and it wasn't until 1994-95 when the Calgary Hitman was granted a franchise for the third team to represent junior hockey, major junior hockey in Calgary. So that's what I talked about in episode number nine, as I talked about the Calgary Wranglers. So finished up with the teams looking back from the Calgary Hitman Corral series. And I also uploaded that video on September 5th, 2020. So episode number 10, I shifted my focus away from the hockey rink on to the pitch, as I talked about the Calgary Boomers for episode 10. Remember the Calgary Boomers? What I found very, very interesting with this particular team is we had an indoor team, and actually the indoor team played at the Stampede Corral, and the outdoor team that played at McMahon Stadium, and this was in 1980-1981. So the Calgary Boomers predated me, but there was the North American Soccer League that uh, took over by that time, and it was towards the tail end of the North American Soccer League that we had the Calgary Boomers, and uh, what I remember more looking back on that episode, just it was just interesting that we had a team that had an indoor team that played in the winter time, played at the Stampede Corral, so even soccer saw some soccer inside the Calgary, in Calgary Stampede Corral, and then uh, McMahon Stadium, natural, but. Uh, it predated me, but uh, it only lasted one season, both in the indoor and outdoor rinks. And then I remember we got this team from Memphis, the Memphis Rogue. And I love that Memphis Rogue logo, if you look back on that uh, video, because for obvious reasons, my favorite animal was the logo. We should have kept that elephant somehow, as I would say. So that was episode 10, the Boomers. I uploaded that video on September 20th, 2020. Until then, episode number 11. I continued to stay on the soccer pitch. Remember the Calgary Strikers, Calgary Kickers? Well, Calgary had a couple more soccer teams in a, another soccer league that played in the late 1980s. Started off, actually, it was the Kickers that was first, and then we had the Strikers, and actually, I believe the Kickers actually won a championship, if I remember. Both of these teams played at Moata, and actually, after the Kickers were uh, about to... Uh, you know, cease operations, either financials, and uh, there was a revival where a new ownership took over and got rebranded as the Kickers, but this is more soccer, just kind of capitalized on the fact that 1986 was the first and only time, as of this recording, that the Canada, the men's soccer team, at least in Canada, made it to the World Cup of Soccer tournament, so there was a couple more soccer teams that I talked about. Like I said, the Boomers predated me. I don't remember much about these teams wasn't really into soccer in my mind and my mind, but uh, still got acknowledged the history that we had some soccer teams that uh, represented Calgary. And yes, they called soccer instead of football. There's another thing I call football that I enjoy a lot more. So that was episode 11, and I uploaded that on October 18th, 2020. So I'll go to episode number 12. Remember the Calgary Storm Mustangs? Well, these teams I do remember existing from uh, for going back to Calgary soccer. There was actually two editions of the Calgary Mustangs. There was one team that existed in 1983. But I do remember the Calgary Storm that played at the Foothills Athletic Park outside of McMahon Stadium and Foothills Stadium or Burns Stadium, depending on what area you're talking about with that stadium. But I do remember those couple teams. And uh, as was talked about in episode 12, that they existed for a couple seasons. I know that the Calgary Storm, 
existed from like 2001 to 2004, and then we had the Mustangs for one year before. Those teams folded, so that's what I talked about in episode number 12. And now you could say that there's another soccer team that is in the premier soccer league that we have in Canada called the Calvary FC. It's a little out of the ways for me to go catch a Calvary team game, but uh, it's a matter of transportation getting down to Spruce Mountains where I am, or it's Echo Field, I believe. It's where the Calvary FC, so you can maybe say some of these soccer teams eventually led to, you know, the Calvary FC. I mean, I haven't made any videos or recap talking about the Calvary FC, but I acknowledge it in this episode, this video. So that was episode 12, and I uploaded this video November 7th, 2020. So when it comes to episode number 13, it wasn't all just talking about men and guys. Well, in episode 13, I talked about some ladies ladies teams and I talked about the Calgary Inferno. Remember the Calgary Inferno that was in the National Women's Hockey League? That won the Clarkson Cup twice in 2016 and 2019 if I believe I'm correct. That's what I talked about in this episode and I also talked about the Calgary Oval Extreme as well in that video. But uh, this we you say the Calgary Inferno I say is the most predominant uh, women's hockey team that Calgary's had that's represented Calgary. I know that there is a revival to try to get in North America National Women's Hockey League. Another team going right now, but uh, it just doesn't have that same interest when it comes to, obviously, the National Hockey League with men, but uh, it wasn't all just about guys. I had to be more inclusive and I had to throw in talking about the Calgary Inferno in that episode. I know that uh, it's much harder to find information sometimes with uh, women's hockey, but I was able to find quite a bit for the Calgary Inferno, so that's what I talked about in episode 13. Kind of tied that together, you know, women's hockey 13 and Inferno. So that was kind of the midway point of the Remember the Calgary series because this is episode 26 with my final recap. So I talked, uploaded that on November 8th, 2020. So after the pitch, I went back on the ice and talked about some women's hockey. So this series was all inclusive after all. I kind of have to make a point about that. So episode number 14, as so I'll take a look at episode number 14. I talked about the Calgary Bronx. Remember the Calgary Bronx? Well, most people probably would say no, as this team was around during the Second World War, or just before the Second World War. But this team evolved from rugby to football. And actually, you can say this was the seeds that were planted for the current Calgary Stampeders. So that's what I talked about, and they also played at the Mawata Stadium, which ultimately the Calgary Stampeders played at the Mawata Armory on the west end of downtown, just south of the, now it's Contemporary Calgary, but it used to be the old Science, Science Center. That's where the Mawata Stadium used to be, before McMahon Stadium was built. So I talked about the Calgary Bronx for episode number 14, and I uploaded that video on November 15th, 2020, and it was a little more challenging to find some information with that other than on the obvious sites because we were going back 70 years. And I kind of say, speaking of the Stampeders, that's what I talked about in episode number 15. Remember the Calgary Stampeders? Hockey team. Let's stress the hockey part. As I talked about Stampeders hockey, Calgary had a hockey team called the Calgary Stampeders. They were a senior hockey league team that also won the Allen Cup, I believe it was in 1946, if I remember. But that's what I talked about. They played in various, various leagues. I think there was a renditions of the Calgary Stampeders hockey team dating back from the late 1930s up until the late 1970s. And yes, this team also did play at the old Stampede Corral. And I did see some references to the Calgary Stampeders in the Alberta Sports Hall of Fame when I went. This was back in 2008. So I talked about the Calgary Stampeders in terms of hockey in this one. So some interesting history. And then actually towards the end of the Cardinals and Expos episode, there was actually used to be a baseball team called the Calgary Stampeders that played in the 1910s. That all I just found was records of the team that existed. I don't know like who played or there, you know, who was on the team or any records or anything outrageous that happened. So there is some Stampeders teams and not just football. That I talk about. 
So that was episode 15, and I uploaded that on November 28th, 2020. So next episode, episode number 16. Well, this one was very, very interesting to find just anything on, because we're going back to 100 years. Remember the Calgary Canadians? And it's spelled Canadians as in, you know, I'm a Canadian. Not the Canadians that the Montreal spells with their team. But episode 16, I talked about the Calgary Canadians, and I felt it was important for me to document this team in this series for episode 16. Because unless another team, junior hockey team, wins the Memorial Cup, the Calgary Canadians are the only team based out of Calgary to win the Memorial Cup. So let's say if the Calgary Evans ever win the Memorial Cup or any other junior hockey team that represents Calgary, it would be something that hasn't happened in over 100 years. So that's what I touched upon in that episode. There wasn't much information to find. And I had to. I just made up that logo because I saw some old pictures and it had a maple leaf with CC. So that's the best I could do for the Calgary Canadians. So that was episode number 16. They did win the Memorial Cup back in 1924. 1924 was a big year for hockey in Calgary. The Calgary Canadians won the Memorial Cup. And the Calgary Tires at least played for the Stanley Cup against the Montreal Canadiens. So that was episode number 16. So episode number 17. Remember the Calgary Dogs? I talked about the Calgary Dogs. And you might say, isn't that team in Okotoks? Yes, that is the same team. But let's acknowledge that the Dogs baseball team started off right here in Calgary. After when we lost the Cannons. And the Calgary Elvis in 2004. There was a collegiate baseball team that was granted to play in Calgary starting in 2004. But in 2005, <coughs> excuse me, we had the Calgary Vipers and the Vipers and the Dogs. They were buddy heads in terms of rights over Foothill Stadium. But I'm going to say what happened there was probably the best thing for the uh, franchise. For the team, it's a Canadian, Western Canadian Baseball League. And they're just basically the only play... In the summer months, it's it's houses uh, baseball teams that uh, college age players that uh, could maybe chase either the dream or at least get into an American college. That uh, Calgary Dogs. That's what I talked about just the history and how it started off in Calgary, but ultimately moved down to Okotoks, just south of Calgary, in a beautiful brand new stand by funded by the Seaman Brothers, who were owners of the Calgary Flames. So. That's what I talked about. So this team still exists. This sort of in Calgary, but not in Calgary, but in Okotoks. So that's what I talked about in episode 17, and I uploaded that video on December 13th, 2020. So that was episode 17. It's episode number 18. I talked about a couple early junior, upper junior hockey league teams. Remember the Calgary Buffaloes and Cowboys? I know this episode was a little more challenging to find information on, and I found some programs at least. On the hockey database, but these were different identities than the Calgary Cowboys or the Calgary Buffaloes that were affiliated with the Centennials. But uh, all I could find were these teams that existed back in the 1950s in the earlier Alberta Junior Hockey League days. That's all I could find for there, and I uploaded this video on December 22, 2020. So there's some Buffaloes and Cowboys to talk about a different identity. In that episode, and you can say that the Calgary Buffalo's uh, hockey, you know, organization or hockey school kind of stems back from that. So we have a little bit of the legacy that continues today. So that's what I talked about in episode number 18. So episode 19, well, considering that recently, if you look at my vlogging on the go, I reminisced back when I was at Dr. Oakley School 30 years ago. Well, episode 19, remember the Calgary Mustangs and A-16 Curry Army? Well, I talked about wartime hockey era back in the day, as this team, especially the A-16 Curry Army, was a hockey team that was assembled based out of the Curry Barracks during the wartime, you know, especially in the Second World War and then the Korean War. So there was definitely some various hockey teams that I touched upon. I threw it in all in that episode, so you can look back on that episode to learn about some Calgary hockey history during the wartime. And the fact that Curry Burks is nearby Marta Loop and Garrison Woods and Dr. Oakley School that I attended. The Curry Burks was still a military base when I went to school there back in 1991, starting in 1991. 
But the whole neighborhood in that has changed now that the Canadian Forces base is pulled out of Calgary and has redeveloped that area. And the only thing that's changed at the old school, Dr. Oakley, there's no air raid sign. That, you know, kind of that scary looking air raid sign from wartime. That goes back to that in episode 19. So that's what I'll talk about, talked about in that episode. So now we're getting into the final third of this series. So episode number 20. Well, I had another couple teams that went way, way, way back. But episode 20, remember the Calgary Rangers and Bronx? I definitely had to dig to find information on these teams. But uh, it got a lot trickier to find some of these teams. I found them in the hockey database, but just to find the relics or any information on that. But uh, there is the Calgary Rangers and Bronx. Got to go back to the 1930s talking about these two teams. This is where I kind of figured, well, I might as well just talk about all the teams that I saw in the hockey database just to not leave anyone out. That's why this series got a little longer than it did. But uh, just like the Calgary Tigers, I don't think anyone would answer yes to that question when I asked if you remember the Calgary Rangers or Bronx. And I uploaded this video back on January 15th, 2021. So episode number 21... I talked to a member of the Calgary Chinooks. How about the Spurs, Royals, or Mustangs? As I tell you, dated this one, I call this one the Chinooks to Mustangs. As This was the other Alberta Junior Hockey League team that uh, Calgary had that was always second behind the Calgary Canucks. Yeah, there was jokes about the Calgary Canucks in terms of free and frenzy last year that Calgary signed a bunch of Vancouver Canucks. Well, we actually do have a team called the Calgary Canucks. Based on the Alberta Junior Hockey League, but this was kind of that second team. As that we had the Chinooks, and then it got rebranded as the Spurs. And then eventually it was looking like the stop who was going to cease operations, but revived as the Calgary Royals and then the Calgary Mustangs. I do remember the Royals and Mustangs. And actually, the Calgary Royals, kind of similar to the Calgary Buffaloes, there is kind of a hockey school that's named after that, where that legacy continues on. But I talked about, you know, how this team started off. It started off in Crow's Nest Pass, then it moved shot to Pinch Creek, and then it was here in Calgary for over 35 years. And eventually this team is going to be playing in Blackfolds, starting in 2021-22 as the Blackfolds Bulldogs. So this franchise still exists in the Alberta Junior Hockey League, but it definitely had a various identity. So that's what I talked about in that episode. When they were the Schnucks to the Mustangs, there were four different names that uh, this team dawned on. And I think I touched upon a couple players that uh, don't call if any on the top of my head that eventually made it to the National Hockey League. But this guy was that second team behind the Calgary Canucks when it comes to the Alberta Junior Hockey League ranks, which I'm going to say is kind of a step below the Western Hockey League, which is where the Calgary Hitman is right now. And I uploaded this video back on February 5th, 2021. So episode number 22, I actually was surprised when I ultimately did more research on this. But being that I went to seat, I was a Trojan fan, and I looked at the Mount Royal Cougars as one of my rival teams. Remember the Mount Royal Cougars and Calgary Trojans? Kind of matched those teams' names together, but uh, these are more teams that played in the Alberta Junior Hockey League. But ultimately, the Cougars were the Mount Royal Cougars that first played in the Alberta Junior Hockey League, and then they moved into the ACAC and competed with the St. Trojans, for example. And then eventually, when Mount Royal got rebranded as a university, they're in the CIS ranks, so they compete with the University of Calgary Dinos. So I talked about that in this episode. And then the Calgary Trojans, no affiliation with my St. Trojans. There was actually a Calgary Trojans senior hockey team, so I just kind of mashed those two together. I just didn't realize when it was the Cougars, it was the same Mount Royal Cougars. That, uh, I guess to say, during my school days at State, did despise, but, uh, I mean, hey, you gotta represent your colors when you're in school of pride. So that was episode number 22, and I uploaded that episode on February 7th, 2021. So episode number 23, remember the Calgary Vipers? Well, I definitely did, and this was the team from the past that I went to games the most. I actually wound up being the last year in 2011, where I had to wonder at that time when I went to games, and they did play at Foothill Stadium. They were an independent baseball league that played in the Golden Baseball League for most of the time. Did win the championship in 2009, but the Vipers started in 2005. Played until 2011, and there also was a winter baseball league 
that existed in 2010 that I talk about. But there was a lot that I definitely talked about with the Calgary Vipers for episode 23. And yes, they did play at Foot Hill Stadium, and this kind of was at the same time when we had the Calgary Dogs. Where now I gotta say, it definitely looks better on the Dogs that they're playing still exist in existence right now in Okotoks, but not the Calgary Vipers. And this was the last professional baseball team to represent Calgary for episode 23. The Calgary Vipers did share my experiences and from that from the 2011 season. Well, also. A couple of big names that were affiliated with the Golden Baseball League. Well, back in uh, 2008 when uh, Vipers were trying to draw in some more attendance. Actually, Calgary Flame, Theron Fleury, played a couple games for the Calgary Vipers. I touched upon that. And in the 2011 season, one of the teams that the Calgary Vipers played was the Yuma Scorpions. And they were managed by this guy named Jose Canseco. Yes, that Jose Canseco, you can... You could say whatever you say about Jose Canseco, but it still was a thrill for me to see Jose Canseco at Foothill Stadium here in Calgary going to a bat because he was the player and manager of the Yuma Scorpions. So I got to see Jose Canseco play at Foothill Stadium in Calgary. And still was surreal that you know you hear player names get called, but then when you hear I'm coming to bat for the Yuma Scorpions, Jose Canseco, I say that's that's uh, that's just surreal in an independent baseball league. But that's what I talked about in episode number 23. It was definitely a lot longer episode, but it was able to find a lot of information and relics for that. So that was episode 20. Episode 24, well, this is a funny glad I got to do it. Remember the Calgary Cannons? This is the team that I feel that I say most Calgary sports fans miss the most, and this is the team that I'd say I missed the most. Here's the cap in the air and the kind of the mid-1990s, when Alex Rodriguez, yes, that same Alex Rodriguez, actually did play some time with the Calgary Cannons, because the Calgary Cannons were affiliated with the Seattle Mariners, and Foothill Stadium, that is still called that right now, they were sponsored by Burns Meat, so they were called Burns Stadium at one time when we had the Calgary Cannons, but uh, they played in the Pacific Coast League from 1985 till. 2002, this is the longest episode that I have in my Remember the Carry series. But we're talking about the Cannons, and they were the AAA baseball team. This is the step just below the Major League. So we saw a bunch of players that played for the Carry Cannons just before they made it big in the Major Leagues. Alex Rodriguez, how about uh, Omar Vizquel, Tina Martinez, Edgar Martinez, who is in the Hall of Fame, and I can see you can... So you can make a case for Omar Vizquel to be in the Baseball Hall of Fame eventually. But uh, the, there was definitely a lot to cover where I talked about the Calgary Cannons and got this hat from Sea of Dead Clothing. You can also ask what era was your favorite because Calgary had, for the Cannons, had different eras where they wore the Flames colors when they first came in. 1985, then they had this blue style and then towards the end of the era. And when you look at the history of the Calgary Cannons, it's actually pretty remarkable that they actually were able to make it to 2002. Before the team, guess what? They moved to Albuquerque. So that should make Homer Simpson happy that his hunger strike worked. That the Springfield team did not move to Albuquerque, but the Cannons did. And the Albuquerque is named the Isotopes. And they're still playing in Albuquerque after the team. Actually, we got this team from uh, Salt Lake City, but that nickname actually was inspired from that episode but uh, the Cannons is definitely the team that I'm going to say I miss the most as a Calgary sports fan as someone who's been born and raised here all my life it's a fact that most of the Cannons history happened in my youth I had did remember going to some Cannons games but it wasn't until I was older where I was able to make more of my decisions that they left and many reasons why the Calgary Cannons eventually left was just you know comes down to money always comes down to money but the fact that Foothill Stadium definitely barely barely made it to standards for AAA standards and definitely wouldn't be up for it now if Calgary were able to get another baseball team. And then the other teams I talked about, you know, the Outlaws, the Dogs, the Vipers, it was trying to recreate that that, you know, we've lost from the Calgary Cannons. And I don't think, other than the Toronto Blue Jays in the Major League Baseball, I don't think there's any other AAA level teams in Canada. And I'm going to say, if Calgary were to ever get a baseball team, we definitely need a more modern stadium that's indoors.
especially with our crazy weather. That was another factor why the cannons struggled at times. But when the cannons were here, it was great. I'm going to say that's the team that missed the most, and it was definitely the longest episode, but it deserved its longest episode for the 18 seasons that they played. So then the last episode I threw in was Stampede Wrestling. Remember Stampede Wrestling? For episode number 25, this episode actually, I'm looking back, was a little more trickier. Actually, going back to the playlist, uh, I uploaded the Cannons video on April 4th, 2021. The Vipers episode I uploaded on March 27, 2021. And then a Stampede Wrestling was May 14th, 2021. That's when I uploaded it. But uh, it was actually a little trickier to find because there's different directions I could have taken that episode. And I just wanted to get that episode done. It was just a bonus that I throw it in because I talked about mostly teams. But uh, Stampede Wrestling, I just figured it was good to put it in the series. You know, acknowledge the Hart family and how it wrestling used to be before, I'm going to say now, essentially it's the World Wrestling Entertainment owns the whole monopoly when it comes to wrestling at that type of style and level that I don't think you're ever going to see that again at the grassroots level. And you're never going to get the same talent that uh, Stampede Wrestling had for episode 25. I talked about that uh, we prefer to go there as opposed to the WWE or it used to be called the WWF, that I remember, but uh, I was also at the tail end of the glory days of Stampede Wrestling, and yes, Stampede Wrestling also did spend some time in the old Stampede Corral. So that's basically just a recap, just touching upon every episode that I made in my Remember the Calgary series. I mean, looking back, I'd just say it was neat that uh, I talked about roller hockey teams, some basketball teams, and hockey teams in the past. And some baseball teams, and even some soccer. So, uh, I'm going to say, what team would you say intrigues most if you're new and just found this video, found about this series? I mean, when it comes to, personally, me, Cannons is the team that I miss the most. I think that was the biggest team that Calgary had in the past, especially when it was a AAA team. I mean, we were affiliated with the Seattle Mariners most of the time. We also were affiliated with the Pittsburgh Pirates, Chicago White Sox, and the Florida Marlins. But uh, that was the team that I'm going to say I missed the most. I also do miss the Vipers just for the experience back in the day. But other teams that I would have been liked to have been around for. Of course, you know, going back to my demolition videos with the Stampede Corral. I would have loved to I got to keep throwing in the Back to Future reference if I had a DeLorean. And I bring it up to 88 miles per hour or 130 kilometers per hour. Try to do it legally as possible. I would like to go back in time to see some of those teams in the Stampede Corral. I definitely would have loved to see what it would have been like to go to a Calgary Cowboys game. What was it like to see you know, the Centennials and Wranglers back in the day and some of those other teams? And going back to the Boomers, even the Corral had soccer, indoor soccer. So, uh, And I guess you know what well, Stampede Wrestling was like back in the day too. But there's this little piece of, you know, that I would have been interesting that I would have been able to see some of these teams that were long before my time, if I had the ability to, but uh, I don't, so at least I just felt it was important for me to at least touch upon the teams, have it on there, just acknowledge the history. But then the current teams that I talk about right now when it comes to the Flames, Hibben, Roughnecks, and Stampeders, there was times that even those teams would have looked like that they could have found their way on this series hypothetically. I mean, the Calgary Flames definitely had their struggles in the late 1990s and early 2000s. You know, to compete with the, you know, low Canadian dollar. Back when the dollar in those days were, you know, 60 mid to low 60 cents U.S., where you needed a dollar fifty Canadian to get one American dollar, and then there was no salary cap. I felt that lockout that wiped up the 2004 or 5 NHL season, I did make a video on it. I thought that was necessary for the league. And for small market teams, but there was times that I thought maybe the Calgary Flames might find their way on this series. It would be tough if I had to ask that question. Remember the Calgary Flames. That would definitely be a very emotional episode if I ever, if I had to do that. But, uh, you know, thankfully we managed to plug through. We had that magical run in 2004. But uh, the Calgary Flames had some struggles that looked like they could have found a way on there. Uh, but the... Carrie Aitman, I mean, that's hypothetical. I mean, they've been strong 
for most of the time, but they were owned by the Flames, but uh, they could have followed suit if the Flames weren't around. So it's amazing that the Calgary Hippon actually has managed to last over 25 years. Given the nature of junior hockey and the fact that we have the Flames in town, and I mean, we definitely love our hockey in Calgary. It's just, you know, the finances that made it tough for the Flames with that economic model. But uh, it was uh, looking back on those. And then the Calgary Roughnecks. There was a time that the Calgary Roughnecks looked like, especially after 2011, that they could have made their way onto this series. Because I remember in 2011, Brad Bannister, the original owner, and thank, thank Brad Bannister for the Calgary Roughnecks, for his vision that he thought there was enough of a market to have a lacrosse team, being the National Cross League that he founded and he owned and operated. He did all he can up until 2011, and he was forced to sell the team. He was begging for someone to buy it, and thankfully eventually the Calgary Flames. But the Calgary Roughnecks, and we still have the Calgary Roughnecks today, but the Calgary Roughnecks looked like they could have maybe potentially made their way onto this series, especially when they won the NLL Cup in 2004 and 2009, and it was a thrill that I was there in 2019. And then the last team, the Calgary Stampeders, a football team. They definitely had some issues. I know that I'm looking back on the Calgary Stampeders' history. Almost every CFL team had their history, even the league. But I know that in the mid-1980s, there were the Calgary Stampeders struggled at times to try to keep the doors open and operate. And then I remember in the early 1990s, and some were telling me, even my dad, told me in 1994, and I remember 1994 too well, for that Western file. One, because it was freaking cold. Two, the fact that Mark O'Glockley in the fourth quarter couldn't kick a field goal to save his life. And if he would have, we would have went to the Grey Cup that year. And three, that McManus to Darren Flutie play. Oh, that was a heartbreak. But I remember after that Western file, after I finally thought out from that, that it looked like that, I mean, my dad says that, he said, you went to your last Dan Peters game. And I remember that following off season, there was a season ticket drive that we barely just got enough, and that was when the CFL had their expansion in the U.S. It, it failed, but uh, it kind of kept the league afloat. But this is kind of the time that the league is in right now because of the current pandemic with COVID-19. But the Calgary Stampeders were on shaky ground in the 90s, and that's when we had Flutie in his prime. I mean, now that the Calgary Flames own all these teams that I talk about, and as long as the Flames are on strong financial ground, all these teams would still survive. And i got to keep going back to the NHL lockout. That lockout was necessary. Looking back, we needed that lockout so that teams like the Calgary Flames can compete. Because after the NHL, when, we, when they lost the Quebec Nordiques and the Winnipeg Jets, my heart was aching for those cities. I thought Calgary and Edmonton were next. I thought we were going to lose those teams to some American city that barely cares about hockey but have money. And then thankfully we were able to hang on to those Alberta teams. Thankfully eventually, thanks to Atlanta when we got the Flames, the Jets are back and then I'm just hoping, just hoping the Quebec Nordiques will finally get back in the National Hockey League someday. Not too sure if that'll ever happen with the current regime but there has to finally be a market somewhere in the Sunbelt City that absolutely, you know, isn't working out. Arizona, for example, and where they are, that, uh, you know, maybe the whole team will move to Quebec City because there's no other market. That was why the Thrashers moved to Winnipeg. But that's just my opinion, but uh, I just felt it was important for me to uh, do this video series. and I made it to the end. And what do you think of it? Favorite teams, episodes? But, uh, you know, it's just also me evolving you know, being a content creator and find different ways to present the content and I was able to research it. I mean, this was me without having to go far and wide and go to the library and during COVID even going to the library is not allowed right now because the COVID police don't allow it. But even then, some of these teams that I talked about, I'm not too sure even what the central, who central library that we have in Calgary that it looks like a beautiful building. I haven't been inside it yet. I'm not too sure if you could even find information on some of these teams that I found any relics, but I, I did all I can, but uh, 
you know, of course, I got to thank the inspirations, you know, when I took in the Calgary Hitman Corral series. Of course, he had that clothing. That was definitely the one that got me over to, I had to do it. And thanks to them, think what they do, and enjoy this hat, and eventually have to be some more merchandise that I'll eventually buy from them to uh, be, you know, add to the collection. And of course, uh, there'll be more unboxing or unveiling videos whenever I buy more merchandise. Of course, there's this thing called a budget that you got it to uh, always deal with, and uh, even more so during these times. And during these times, I had to reevaluate and get some help with my finances, so that's why I can't just, you know, go on the shopping spree and buy everything from See that clothing, but at least if I acknowledge it and talk about it, and I found out on social media that someone else who has some money in their budget can buy some merchandise, and of course that Chris Wilson, sorry, so I have all that in the description below. So yeah, this is just my final recap on this Remember the Cavern series, and I'm glad I was able to finally see it to the end, and definitely put a bow on it. Now pick which bow, as I put it in the beginning of the video, which one is the most appropriate. But as I have to say, if you want to follow along with this Calgary Sports fan's journey, home of the Flames, Hip and the Roughnecks and Stan Peters, and formerly all these teams that I talked about in my Remember the Calgary series, so you can see all those episodes in my playlist, and I'll put them in the description below if you want to revisit any of them, just to see what I could find and what I felt about those teams at the time. But I also do a variety of non-sports kind of like personal vlogs, which is why I talk about whatever's on my mind, or attempt to comedy, it is what it is. It's an attempt to be funny, attempt to comedy. And I also do share experience them on the road or at a sport event. Let's say, for example, at the Calgary Hitman Corral series, when those teams got introduced out, and I recapped my experiences talking about that, the Corral series, and, and then vlogging on the go. I've definitely done a lot more of that, and I think I'll explain in a separate video why I've been doing a lot more of that. I enjoy doing it including showing demolition progress of the Stampede Corral. So if that all sounds like it'd be interesting to watch to follow along with this Calgary Sports fan's journey, you know what you do, just uh, make sure you hit like and subscribe. I also have my other social media links down in the description below, as well as like I've done for all my other Remember the Calgary series, all the relics, all the information I found. I just want to try to source as many information as possible, just to where I got it from, and of course the inspiration. You know, just to cover my bases, too. I mean, it should all be fair use. and I don't have any footage that I can share. Even if I did, I don't want to put it in the video just in case. But, uh, you know, I just figure it should be somewhat fair use to have a graphic and say this is where I got it from. And I'm using that said graphic to talk about that topic in the video. So that's all I have for my final recap. So, yeah, it's been a pleasure for me to do this series. It, I see it through. It took me over a year to do it, but uh, it was fun to look back on. I guess there'll be other series I might do in the future, but uh, I'm just glad I did this. And, you know, lots of Calgary sports history that I talked about in this series. So, so I want to say thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. And, of course, been to watch my Remember the Calgary series. It's not, it's not like a soap opera or a sitcom that... Uh, you have to follow it in order because there's not really any uh, anything in order, but uh, it is what it is. I mean, just pick and choose and what I talked about and talked about the best I could. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.